Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together, alright, and we are still preparing for those prelims. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family, okay, and of course today we are going to be looking at, uh, you know, just this interesting trick graph, okay, I took this from the Eastern Cape, I think it's, uh, you know, 2023 in June, right, um, um, so let's just quickly have a look at the question. They say in the diagram below, the function of f of x is equal to 10x minus 1 is drawn uh, for the interval minus 180 to 180. Right, now they say to us, draw the function g of x, uh, which is equal to cos of 2x in the special answer book. So I don't have the special answer book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that uh, onto this diagram that we have over here, right? Now, cos of 2x. Now, I want you, first of all, to notice that our frequency is 2. So that means that um, in this case, of course, our period is simply going to be 180, which, me which means we're going to be able to draw a full cos graph within a 180 degree cycle, right? Cost graph obviously starts at zero. Uh, uh, sorry, at uh, zero. I mean, the cost graph is one. Okay, so what was going to be happening at 90 will now happen at 45. Okay, so we are squashing it up. Okay, so we're going to have a graph that looks like this. Now, if you want to plot the points, nothing wrong with that. Okay, um, you can do that. All right, so I'm just going to uh, just use my experience on graphs. All right. I know it's not necessarily the most perfect of graphs, but I mean, it It does send the point home, right? Okay, so there we, ha we have our uh, cost graph, cost of 2x, right? Now, they say to us, write down the period of g, right? Now, remember, in this case, as I said to you, whenever we talk about period, okay, we know that period is always going to be equal to 360 divided by the frequency, right? Okay, um, our frequency in this case is 2. That's the coefficient of our uh, variable or our, our x in this case. This is 360 over 2. So it means that our period is 180. So that means that uh, simply we'd be able to complete a full cost graph, okay, within a 180 degree cycle, okay? Right, now they say to us, write down the new equation in the form h of x. If we take f, right, if f is moved by three units up, okay, so essentially, what this means, ladies and gents, is that I'm going to take my graph, so 6.3, h of x would simply be uh, f of x, right? And I'm going to move it three units up, which means I'm going to add three. So it will be f of x plus three. But remember, what is f of x? That was 10x minus one. So that would be 10x minus 1 plus 3, so which means that the graph of h of x in this case would be 10x. Actually, I should have said plus 3 there. I'm already thinking of the answer. Okay, so this is uh, 10x plus 2. Okay, so that would be the graph of h of x. All right, now... Uh, the next question, they say to us, use your graphs, okay, to determine the values of x for which cos of 2x must be less than um, 10 of x minus 1, okay, uh, for the interval negative 180 to 0, right? Now, in this case, where is the cos graph? Now, please, I want you to note, every time they ask us this qu these questions, they are simply saying, where is our cost graph beneath or below that 10 graph, okay, between negative 180 and 0? Now, we're going to have to go to uh, our graph and see where does that occur, right? Now, I want you to please note in this case, 
um, I'm trying to take, uh, take a different color so that I can show you that. Now, you can see the moment we, uh, we get to negative 135, okay, so there's that negative 135, they are equal there, right? But notice the cost graph now is below or beneath the 10 graph, right? Now, I want you to be careful. When, once we get to negative 90, what happens? The 10 graph, remember, goes all the way here. So now the 10 graph is actually below the cost graph, okay? So that means that that will only occur between negative 135 and negative 90, okay? So I'm going to give the answer to that and say, well, that will happen where X is an element of... Right, let's write that in blue. When x is an element of negative 135, okay, and we're going to include negative 135 because um, in this case they are equal, they said less than or equal to, so that's negative 135 all the way up until negative 90. Now, we're not going to include negative 90 because remember, the 10 graph is undefined there, right? It doesn't touch this asymptote there. So I'm going to exclude that value. Uh, another way of writing it uh, in this case, we can just simply say if you want to write it as an inequality, that x would be less than negative 90, but it would be greater than or equal to negative 135. Okay, right. I hope I've been able to explain that well enough. Okay, just for you to understand that. Okay, so let's get to the last part of this. Now they say use your graph to solve the following equation, right? Um, now, note they said use the graph. So please don't go into long-winded, um, you know, answers and trying to prove identities and so on, right? All that we're simply going to do is we're going to take the graph that we have. Now, how can we express this? what we are given there in terms of the graphs that we already have, right? So this would simply be, okay, so I'm going to write 6.5 here, okay? So I've got cos of B um, is equal to, so I'm going to try and have it mimic what we already have, half B, 10 of half B, minus 1. Now you do agree that it looks like those two graphs that we have. However, the two graphs that we have, what do we have there? So cos of 2x equal to 10x minus 1. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that x in this case, or rather, they've replaced half b for x, and they have replaced, in this case, B for 2x and it makes sense that a B is actually two times half x right so in this case what it simply means is that um, the value of x is equal to half B in this case right now I want you to please note where were these two graphs equal to each other right where were they equal to one another. Let's go to our picture there because they said use the graphs. Now they are equal, ladies and gents, you can already see this, right? They are equal, okay, I'm going to use uh, the green color there. At negative 135, they were equal, right? They were also equal at x is equal to 45, okay? Right, so in this case, I'm going to go back there and say, well, in this case, x equal to negative 135 or at x is equal to 45. But remember that x is equal to half b. So that means that half of b will be one negative 135 or half b will be equal to 45. And of course, what do we do? We multiply by 2 on both sides to get rid of that half, or you can say divide by half, okay? So B 
would be negative 270 or B, right, if you multiply by 2 again on both sides, right, so B would be equal to 90 degrees. Now, in this case, um, I'm not too sure they didn't give us a restriction, okay? Uh, if we are still maintaining that uh, we're working between negative 180 and 180, okay, um, of course, this would not be applicable. But because they didn't necessarily specify that, uh, I'm going to actually accept both answers. Okay. Right. I hope that made sense, ladies and gents. Very interesting graph question. Okay. I hope that I did actually, um, uh, you know, help in whatever way that I could. Of course, I'll be throwing in more of the, um, you know, algebra side of things tomorrow. Okay, just look out for them. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.